grow together and learn about God. Hello, I'm Steve and I have actually been watching and playing a lot of sports lately. Now, I'm not too great at sports, but I do hold a record. I have been hit in the face with every single ball from every single sport. So, I've been thinking. You know how there are referees in sports? These are the people who watch the game closely to make sure that the rules are being followed so that everyone is safe. But what if a referee followed me around everywhere I went calling fouls and stuff? Hmm, now that would be something. You know, friends, I used to want to be a referee. I actually got to try to be a referee in the basketball league at my church. I actually think I was pretty good. That water break was too long, Pastor. Two foul shots for the other team. Your shoes don't match your socks. Fashion foul, two shots. Technical foul on the youth, Pastor. No laughing on my court. In fact, you're out of here. They said I took it too seriously or something, but I was just trying to keep the peace. Those church basketball leagues were pretty nasty. Refereeing is a tough gig, but somebody's gotta do it. What I've learned, and the best thing to do when trying to figure out how to keep the peace is to stop things before they happen. Let me give you an instance, an example, a happenstance, a common sense. What did you say to me? What did you say to me? Nuh-uh, you first. Don't you tell me what to do. Okay, okay. Let's just cool it with some peace, please. Hey, Steve, cool outfit. Are you a referee? Whoa, how did you know? I must look like a pretty good referee. Well, you're wearing the whole... Never mind. <laughs> oh, well. Hey, I was just thinking about what I've learned from my years. Well, just one experience of refereeing. That the best way to keep peace is to stop something before it happens. Oh, there's actually a story in the Bible where a person named Abigail has to do that very thing. Stop a fight? Well, it wouldn't have been much of a fight, but yeah. Kind of. The Bible story is from the book of 1 Samuel chapter 25. Like I said, it's the story of a person named Abigail. She would have made a great ref. Abigail was married to a guy named Nabal. A little foreshadowing here, the Bible says that his name means fool. Definitely would have called foul on his parents for that name. Yes. But in the story, it's actually Nabal who commits a foul against the wrong person. Oh no, against who? One of the most famous people in the Bible, David. I know a lot of Davids, bruh. This David, was he a shepherd? David Shepherd that went to my elementary school? No, I'm pretty sure he's not the same guy. The David from the Bible story loved God very much, and oh, he beat a giant named Goliath. Oh, that David, yeah, yeah, he became the king of Israel. Yes, but this story is from before he was king. Okay, okay, back to the dude named Fool. Well, his name was Nabal. Nabal was shearing his sheep one day, and David and his men were nearby. They had been near Nabal's land before, and they treated all Nabal owned with the utmost respect. They didn't commit fouls of any kind against him. Now David sent a message to Nabal, asking that he return kindness to give David and his men something to eat and drink. Uh-oh, I can almost see a foul coming. Hmm, I'm an awesome ref. Yes, you are. Anyway, Nabal replied to David's message by saying in 1 Samuel 25, 10, who is this David? Who is this son of Jesse? Many servants are breaking away from their masters these days. Why should I take my bread and my water and the meat I have slaughtered from my shearers and now give it to the men coming from who knows where? Oh, technical foul. Right. David was not happy. He told his men to get ready and fight and promised to not leave a single man alive that lived on Nabal's land. Whew. 
And I thought getting hit in the face with a hockey puck was bad. Huh? Oh, nothing. Okay. So Abigail, Nabel's wife, heard about what her husband had said. She knew what was coming and it wasn't going to be peaceful. So she set out to make peace in this situation. She put together a huge gift for David and went out to meet him for herself. That's some first class refereeing right there. Yes. First Samuel 25, 23 says, when Abigail saw David, she quickly got off of her donkey and bowed down before David with her face to the ground. After that, she basically told David to please forgive her husband for being, well, exactly what his name meant. And what was that again? Fool. Sorry, I asked. His name meant fool. Oh, right. David believed that God had sent Abigail and he thought she was pretty great. So he accepted her gift and decided not to pay back Nabal for his foul against him. God sent Abigail to David because making peace is part of God's game plan. What a cool story. Suspense, near tragedy, a donkey, a good ending, it had it all. The Bible never disappoints. So I guess you didn't have to be a referee to keep the peace. We all have opportunities to do it every day. And when we decide to keep the peace, we're playing by God's game plan. Exactly. Like when you hear somebody say something mean about someone or post something mean about someone, you can make a game plan to be the one to step up and say something kind and encourage others to be more peaceful. Or if you see people fighting over something, you can be the one to point out another way to solve their issues other than fighting. Or if you see a friend about to make a really foolish decision like the one Nabal made in the Bible story, saying a gentle word to steer them clear of disaster is a great game plan to keep the peace. I think you're getting it. Abigail saw the opportunity to make peace and she took it. We can do the same every day because making peace is part of God's game plan. I had a great time refereeing, getting hit in the face, and learning Bible stuff with you today. It's always a fun time to grow together. See you next time. Bye.